All right, say hi, everybody. Say louder. Hi. Hi, hi everybody. What's your name? Um, what is it? Uh, Eleanor? Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you want to shoot a video with me? Yeah. You do? Uh -huh. What do you want to talk about? Fishes. Fishes? Uh -huh. You want to talk about headaches first, and then we'll talk about fishes? Yeah. Are fishes good for headaches? Uh -huh. Omega-3s? Uh -huh. Yeah, they are. Cool. Okay, I'm going to shoot a video. Say bye to everybody. Hi. All right, cool. Go play with KK, okay? Cool. All right, what's up everybody? Uh, that just happened real quick because my daughter came to the room right we're about to start. So I thought I'd introduce her to you. That's Eleanor, um, our three-year-old. And uh, anyways, I'm gonna talk to you guys about headaches. I'm Dr. Kyle Loveless, uh, a wellness expert here in the Charlotte area. My wife and I, Dr. Kyle, have two clinics, one in South Park and one in Matthews called Queen City Health Center. And hey guys, our whole purpose and mission is to change the way we view and manage our health. I think that if we keep doing what we're doing in terms of healthcare, in terms of um, making decisions the way we've made decisions in terms of our health, we're gonna continue to get sicker and sicker. We're the sickest country in the industrialized world right now. We take, but the problem is the kicker is that we pay, have more doctors, we have more hospitals, we take more medication than any other country in the world. And I've had people tell me that, oh, you know, you shouldn't tell people about medications and all that. And I'm not telling, gonna tell you about what to take or what not to take. But I am gonna tell you that what we're doing isn't working. And I think we can all see that at this point. And so we need to do something different. So today's show is gonna be about headaches. And I wanna to talk to you about understanding headaches, whether it's migraines, whether it's cervical genic headaches, whether it's uh, um, uh, cluster headaches. And I'm not gonna list off all the different types of headaches, but headaches are very, very misunderstood, even in the medical world. Did you know that even a neurologist only has about four hours of an actual medical treatment training in, in terms of medical school? and an average, average physician only has about two hours of training in terms of headaches. It's truly under, uh, misunderstood. And really, when you Google headaches and migraines, the actual cause isn't for sure known. But I'm gonna teach you over, over the last, what the things I've learned over the last 10 years and what I think would be kind of a really, really li uh, very likelihood of what's causing these things based on what I've seen from testing we've done, from treatment care plans that we've done, and how, how we've gotten results with patients. We're usually about 90 to 95% on getting rid of people's headaches on a long-term basis. Almost everybody gets a reduction, but we've had people that have had migraine headaches their entire life. And I actually, I'm gonna th say a patient right now. So she came into our clinic uh, probably about five or six months ago, and um, she works at a bank, and she's just had migraines most of her life. She actually has type uh, type one diabetes as well, so she was on an insulin pump most of her life. I think she's probably 25, 26 years old. And um, yeah, she came in and just really couldn't understand how we were gonna do anything different for her headaches. And I'll tell you, we went through a process where we took x-rays, we did some evaluations and some testing, and then we started care. And the coolest thing, and this isn't always, so I'm not saying this happens with everybody, but it's a really cool thing, is after her first adjustment, she didn't have a migraine again. So it was literally one adjustment. She had never been to a chiropractor to get adjusted. And that's not all I'm gonna talk about today because there is more to it than that many times. However, just that adjustment was enough to relieve pressure from her upper part of her neck releasing the uh, allowing proper blood flow allow, allowing proper nervous system flow allowing proper cerebral spinal fluid flow and her headaches went away so i'm going to teach you guys today from my experience and my research and my understanding and everything else in physiology what i truly believe is is, is a key part of a lot of different headaches and there's more than one part to this there's a big um, it could be a lot of different things Let's just say it that way. But ultimately, when it comes to things like cervical genic headaches, that's when you have the muscle spasming right here in the back of your neck, right? You have these occipital muscles right here, and they'll literally spasm and create headaches that can actually travel around your whole head, that can travel around into the neck. Okay, if you have those, that's called a cervical genic headache, and that can come from uh, chronic physical, chemical, or emotional stress. And get this, you have in your spinal cord something called the dura mater. It's, it's, if you've ever heard of an epidural, well, the dura mater surrounds your spinal cord. And when we go into a, what's called a fight or flight mode or a stress response, the first thing that happens is that dura mater stretches. And when it stretches, it tells the rest of your body to go. So if you're in a stressed mode or you've lost the curve in your neck, same concept, this is a physical stress stretching. They've shown at least stretches your spinal cord and that dura mater, it puts you into a stress response. Well, the reason, one of the simple reasons why this can cause cervical genic headaches is because those 
occipital muscles actually attach to the dura mater and it'll stretch that and create muscle spasming. So that's just cervical genic headaches. Let's talk about migraine headaches. Many times a good majority of migraine headaches are upper cervical or upper, upper neck issues as well from constant stretching. Also from the top vertebrae in your neck, the top bone in your neck. I thought I had my spine in here. I guess I don't, but the top bone in your neck the artery that goes through here is called your vertebral artery. And it feeds really the blood supply to your brain. And that vertebrae being shifted out of alignment, meaning it rotated or locked or not moving properly, creating stress and create, actually create muscle spasms in that artery leading to migraines. And that can literally be probably what was causing hers. And I say probably because we did the testing, we did the x-rays, but we're never 100% sure just based on what we see. No one is. If anybody tells you this is it no matter what, I would run the other direction because truthfully, we don't know enough about the human body to say that, but I can tell you for sure after years of doing this and talking with other doctors and researching that we have a good handle on how to help people with headaches and migraines. So that's your cervical genic, that's your migraine headaches. Hey, those cervical genic headaches could come from a chemical stress. Has anybody drinking a lot uh, one night and then woke up the next morning with a hangover and everything hurts, specifically this right side right here, maybe the left side of the occipital muscles and it's like this pain constantly going around? Well, that chemical from alcohol, that dehydration, stretches your spinal cord and creates that stress, okay? And creates the pain that you're feeling. So it can be a chemical problem as well. So let's dive into this. I made some notes back here for you and really for me to track along because I wanna make sure I do a good process for you guys. But you look at this and let's just talk about the current medication. So if you went to your medical doctor, what are some possibilities of the things they would do? And I taught, I'm gonna start out with the most, the newest ones, okay? And I, I went on WebMD because to be honest, there's, I don't know them all. They're always constantly adding more. And it's because they're so confused on what to do to help people with headaches that they're constantly adding new stuff and none of them actually correct the cause. They all simply just help with the symptoms and try to do everything they can to medically stop that feeling of the migraine. And that's understandable. If you have them, if you, I've never actually had a migraine, so I can't talk. I've had headaches before, very rare, but I've had them before. I've never had a migraine, but I can imagine a migraine, someone with a migraine, and I've seen them come in where they can, can't even see straight. I've had patients that have to stay inside for days when they have migraines. And I'll just tell you that, that I can't imagine, so I can't relate with you there. But from talking to enough people, I can understand that whatever you gotta take to feel better in the moment. So I'm not telling you when I go through these medications that these these are the devil and that you should never touch them because hey, if you're in such bad pain, sometimes that's created an emergency situation. Maybe you gotta take something in that moment. But what we need to figure out is not being, having, how, how you don't have to take that every day or even every month because some of these are really hardcore medications and some of them they're using as preventative, which you are taking every single day, okay? So I wrote these lists down just here, so I'll be looking down just looking at those. But obviously the over-the-counter medications, you got your Tylenols, you got your ibuprofens. Tylenol is the, is the uh, second leading cause or the number one cause of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You got ibuprofen, which the FDA came out last year and said you have a 40% chance of having a heart attack within the month that you take it. So that's a big deal. Those are big, uh, big medications. And those are NSAIDs. I'm not just talking about ibuprofen, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, naproxen, all those things. Okay. So those aren't something we want to be taking regularly. I mean, think about how many people might've had a heart attack from that and they never knew that was the actual cause. Right, so we have we have our leaves, your ibuprofen, we have our Tylenols, which can cause liver issues and other health problems, and then you also have like things like Excedrin and things like that, and so they might help in the moment, but again, we don't want to be taking these on a daily basis. I've been doing testing for people um, in this last year, and, and some of the tests were coming back with liver issues, and those people are like, "Why well, don't drink?" I'm like, "Okay, well, how often do you take Tylenol?" And they've only been patients for a couple months and they've been taking that Tylenol almost every day, some of them for up to a year, and they're having liver issues now and it's causing all these other health problems. And I always go back to you guys, it's always connected. So when you have a headache, remember I said in some of the other videos, I say the questions that you ask, the quality of the questions that you ask will decide the quality of the answers that you get. And that's so important to understand because if you're not asking quality questions, if you're saying, how do I get rid of my headaches? To be really honest, that's not a quality question what's causing my headaches and what's my body trying to tell me in this situation is a quality question because that's going to lead you to investigate what's actually happening in your body and you might actually go to a get to a place where you find out maybe you have a digestive problem that's leading to a lot of this maybe you have a, an infection maybe you have something like um uh, uh maybe you have a hormonal problem and that's that's leading to a lot of this or maybe you have both 
And that can be uh, because of migraines. Maybe you have a spinal problem, maybe you have spinal degeneration, maybe you've lost the curve in your neck, maybe you have a whiplash injury or, or, or ligament damage you don't even know about from a injury you had 20 years ago. And that's what's causing your migraines. So it should lead you, a headache should lead you to investigate, not just go to your doctor and take a medication. So the other ones are, are things like cephaly, um, e-stem. E-stem is, is something that they actually, it, it's an electrical stimulation unit now. Cephaly is an electrical stimulation unit that they wrap around your head and it just, it, it's the common pain response stuff. So if you, if you have that constant, um, uh, it's kind of like if you, if you hit your hand and it hurts real bad and you rub it, you're trying to rub it to like get rid of the pain. It's because those, those fibers, those A fibers get to your spinal cord faster and they'll actually block some of that pain response. And that's kind of how that electrical stimulation works. So it's never really getting rid of the cause, but it can help with pain in the moment. And if it's simply that, that's fine. But ultimately they have something like, you have other things like CGRP inhibitors and CGRP is, I mean, that's a big one. That That's something that's actually your body's most prevalent or uh, most powerful vasoconstrictor. So the last thing you want to inhibit is something your body uses to vasoconstrict in an emergency situation, meaning prevent to, prevention of strokes and other things. So yes, that might get rid of your migraines and that might be successful in studies to get rid of migraines in terms of how you feel in the moment. But I would highly, I mean, I would never want any of my, anyone in my family on something that's going to affect their vasoconstrict or vasodilation, their body's ability to dilate. Um, yeah, I, I just wouldn't do that. So Next is Botox, and this has been around for a while, but they do 31 Botox shots every 12 weeks. So we're gonna inject a bacteria in you to kill, pretty much numb that area so you don't feel it. You see how like, the, the way of thinking, they're just, they're constantly just trying to think of the symptom instead of really evaluating the body as a whole and just figuring out why these migraines are happening and start to, tr not treat, but start to build up and restore the body so someone doesn't have migraines. Okay, and then so the, the idea of 31 Botox shots is, is, is that's kind of like one of those things I would read and be like, are you serious? That's silly. Mild, anesthesia, mild anesthesia. So actually kind of knock you out a little bit. We got anti-seizures. Don't want to, I don't think I even need to talk about that. Antidepressant medications for migraines. We got beta blockers, which is a blood pressure medication can affect your heart and cause heart problems down the road. There's a list, the list can go on. And that's just what I said. I mean, it just kept going when I was looking at this list of medications for this stuff, even from the major, major neurological medications. I've had people come in on, on gabapentin for migraines. And, and, and ultimately with headaches, doctors are lost. And I know that because of how many CAT scans they do. When, when a patient goes in, I think it's one out of 11, every 11,000 CAT scans actually shows a tumor. But I think it's one out of every 10 patients that goes in with migraine headaches to a doctor ends up getting a CAT scan. And because they're just searching, they don't know what to look for, and they're just trying to figure out what's happening in the brain, but it's usually never a brain problem. Okay? It's really not a brain problem or even a head problem. It's a system problem causing blood flow issues or muscular and nervous system issues. And so that's how we have to look at it. So current medications, I'm just gonna tell you, they might be working for you in the moment, but they're not a long-term answer. And even most patients, they aren't working for in the moment because it numbs their body, it numbs their mind, and they don't get to be the individual that they wanna be. They don't, they're not enjoying life. That's not a treatment plan. I posted earlier, and I'm probably gonna get some flack on this, but I said, any doctor that says, here, take this medication, you're probably gonna have to take it for the rest of your life, find a new doctor because that's not a healthcare plan. That is a treatment plan to manage a disease and nobody needs to or has to manage a disease because our body was powerfully made and it's made to heal itself. Your body is always trying to get back to homeostasis. It's always trying to get back to health and healing. It's never trying to just manage a disease. Any symptom you have is your body adapting to its environment. If you have migraines, your body's adapting to your environment. If you have a, if you have a digestive problem, your body's trying to adapt. That's all that simply tells you. And you want to figure out why is your body so stressed in that area. So when we look at the causes of these things, I mentioned some of it right off the bat, but let's start with the spine. Okay. And so we talk about the spine, the upper part of your neck, blood supply to your brain goes right through there. So any misalignments in the upper part of your neck can cause migraines. When you, if you start getting chiropractic care and you start getting adjusted and those start to diminish, you know, that could be a part of the problem. It also helps chiropractic also helps with the stress response. It helps your body handle and adapt to stress. There's many studies that show it brings your body closer to homeostasis or balance helps you handle stress, kind of like an adaptogen. And so in doing that, it can reduce vasoconstriction. So you have two parts. One, you're keeping the vertebrae moving, keeping blood floating and nerve flow to your brain, but you're also helping with the stress response. The second with the spine is when those vertebrae lock up, the muscles, we talked about the occipital muscles. If you're someone like this and you have headaches, 
it's probably coming from your neck. If you're on a computer all the time and you get headaches, it's probably coming from your neck. Now, could it be coming from staring at a screen too? Yes, it very well could be. And that, that's something you wanna change. So change your screen time, change, get some um, yellow lens glasses so you're not staring at this blue screen all day long. Those are all things that can actually lead to it. But simply a lot of people are just being like this, constant stress on the upper part of your neck. I mean, think about it. It's kind of like if you had a bowling ball and I held it here versus here. If I hold a bowling ball out here, it's gonna be very stressful to the upper part of my neck and the lower part of my neck. And how the spine, literally the, the nerves or the, the artery that feeds blood supply to your brain, when we talk about migraines, because migraines are a blood supply, blood flow issue, called it from vasoconstriction, that right there, you see the spine right here, you have an artery that goes right through here, feeds the blood supply to your brain. So uh, we talk about the gut, and I've had patients come in, we took a spinal x-ray and they saw neck issues in the upper part of your neck. We started to adjust their neck, and their headaches started to diminish or decrease, like especially this is a big deal with migraines. Um, but there was just more to it. So if someone comes in with any kind of other digestive issues and migraines along with it, I always recommend food allergy test and a stool test. Or if we take an x-ray of the thoracic part of the spine and we see within the abdomen, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of black spots or inflammation in the gut, a lot of, excuse me, a lot of gas can actually create that gut problem. And so we'll, we'll do a, this is really big. So for women, that constantly have uh, uh, menstrual cycle issues or uh, endometriosis or anything like that, will, uh, many times that hormone problems will cause migraines. They'll have those two things together. So we wanna do a hormone analysis, which we'll do a Dutch test, maybe a, a Dutch test to see what their metabolism looks like in their, in their, uh, for their hormones, also what their estrogens are doing and things like that. So that can be a big picture viewpoint for you. So many times, and I have a patient right now actually that we have to do all these on. So she came in and she had migraine headaches, digestive problems, and menstrual cycle issues. And so we did this, we started out with the stool test, we started out with a food allergy test and chiropractic care. And just from those, we saw a huge change. I think she had over 20 something uh, food allergies and there were a lot of them were healthy things that you would think are healthy. And she had a gut, inf a bacterial infection, a yeast infection, and a, um, uh, yeah, those two things. So we've got infection, a bacterial infection. So we had to address those, the food allergies. We started to do that. They started to diminish some more. Then we said, okay, let's do a, a hormone test. We did the Dutch hormone test, had some issues there, and we started to do some herbal supplementing to help with that. And that's where we're at right now. And they're diminishing, but they're still there. And so my next thinking is that that doesn't change. We need to look and see what kind of toxins are in her environment. And so she just, we, when we were talking about mold, she actually found, realized that she's been living in mold for a while and that could be a big part of it. A lot of times people will be in a moldy environment and they leave that moldy environment, but their body doesn't detox from it because they have liver issues and it'll actually build up and still be there. And so we're supporting her liver right now, doing chiropractic care, doing some gut health, is going to slowly get her body healing. So it's a big picture view, and it might not be an overnight fix with all the problems go away at once, but three, four, five months, six months, a year down the road, much healthier, much healing. That's a real healthcare plan. You see how there's a plan in place to start to address not just the migraines, but restore the human body so that they, she doesn't have migraines anymore. That's a big, big picture there, guys. And so when we look at, look at the big picture, we want to, look, want to look at the chemical stresses is it mold? Is it um, the, the chemicals you're around all the time in terms of like, uh, I've had people it just with lavender, and that's not chemical necessarily, but just lavender causes migraines for them. Are you allergic to some of the chemicals that you're around all the time? Is it a physical stress, right? Do you sit at a computer all day long? Do you sleep? A lot of people with migraines, this is one common thing I can ask people when they first come with migraines. I say, do you sleep on your stomach? Because they sleep like this all night long and they're twisting their neck like this. So they'll over, over time get tingling numbness in the hands also will get things like migraines. So if you sleep on your stomach, change that one. Emotional stress, are you in a constant stress mode? And that's, that could be anything emotionally. And then now do you have all these adding up? You're sitting at a computer all day, you're around chemicals all the time, you're emotionally stressed out. Well, then it makes sense why you're now, your body is adapting to its environment and you're seeing migraines because your body's just trying to survive. And taking a medication, a chemical drug medication will make you worse because you're adding a chemical stress to your environment. You might, but that's like someone that's depressed, taking an antidepressant to feel chemically making their body worse in the long run. So we gotta get to the actual root cause. Finally, guys, I wanna give you some great things you can do. Start to change right now, or even more, uh, more importantly, start to look at in terms of healthcare help for this stuff, okay? So first off the right about, if you deal with headaches of any type, go to a chiropractor. 
I've been working in chiropractic for 10 years and I've seen amazing things when it comes to headaches. And I know my fellow chiropractors have as well. It's one of the quickest things you'll see change with chiropractic here is headaches going away or definitely diminishing, okay? And again, I've told you, I've had patients, one adjustment, their migraines go away and they've had these things their entire life. So chiropractic care, start with that, get a good uh, spinal x-ray to see what's happening in your spine, one, and then two, Start to work on a correction process to get your spine moving again. Number two, food allergy test, stool test, and or hormone test based on your other symptoms and your other lifestyles. And that doctor you go to should be able to tell you start with. And hey guys, if you want an actual doctor to go to, I'm gonna say go to the wellnessway.com. The wellnessway doctors are incredible in their approach to healthcare meaning they're not gonna have a, a protocol for every single person. Not everybody's gonna get the same test, not everybody's gonna get the same treatment plan based on symptoms at all. It's gonna be, let's not guess, let's test, and what should we do for you? It's individual healthcare, and it's also a different approach when we look at it because we're looking to restore the body, not treat an insufficiency, not treat a sufficiency or not having enough insufficiency. Sorry, I can't talk today but not treating an insufficiency of certain vitamins, but treating why would your body insuffi be insufficient of those vitamins, things like that. So next is go ahead and do this. This one's so simple. I know it's hard, but it's simple. It's like simple to say to do, but it's hard because it's a lifestyle change, but remove gluten from your diet and not just gluten, remove gluten, remove corn, remove soy, canola oil, vegetable oil, safflower oil, Probably, oh, dairy, I would take dairy out. If I had migraines or headaches, I would take all of those things out because they're common food allergies, one, and two, they're all genetically modified foods, super inflammatory for our body, hard for our body to digest. Take out sugar in terms of refined sugars. Reduce as much refined sugar as possible. Hey guys, your, your, um, your, your headache could be coming from a liver or gallbladder issue too, and just reducing sugar and, and um, bad fats could get rid of your headaches from that. Finally, these are some supplements you can take not necessarily to fix your migraines, but to help you in a scenario where you're having migraines. So you can take these on a regular basis while you're trying to figure out the rest of this stuff. Magnesium is a great one. Many uh, migraine headaches have been linked back to magnesium, and I've said take magnesium to people, and that they took that and their headaches went away. I mean, it's been that simple for them. So, but we wanna find out why they're deficient in magnesium, more importantly, because you don't need to be on a supplement your whole life. B12. Many times people with migraine headaches especially will have B12 deficiencies, and that's typically gonna be a gut problem, not digesting and absorbing that B12 properly, or you have a methylating issue in the liver. So looking at B12 is a good one, or just B-complex in general. Those are great starts. So magnesium, B12, that's what I would start with, and if you um, really wanna get rid of your headaches, you really truly need to follow that process. Go see a chiro, go to a wellnessway doctor, go to thewellnessway.com, Start looking at testing, seeing what's happening in your body, remove the simple stuff, and maybe start with some magnesium and B12. And that's a great starting point to make sure you're, you're trying to address the root cause of your problem. And then, hey, if you need that medication when you're in severe pain, I get it, but let's not make it something you do on a regular basis. Let's try to look at that medicine cabinet for what it is. It's not something that's gonna get us healthy. It's an emergency care cabinet. And we all know that those people that have had that thing chunked full of medication are the sickest people on this planet, and you don't wanna be that person. Cool. So, hey guys, I hope you got a lot out of this. Make sure you like it, make sure you share it. There's so many people out there that need to hear what we talk about now and um, are tired of just being sick and tired and you could be the answer to them doing that. There's no better thing in the world than to be a part of someone else's testimonial. Cool. Hey guys, thanks so much for doing this. Make sure you like it, make sure you love it and share it and we will talk to you tomorrow.